who made heaven and earth. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Good morning. Light and peace in Jesus Christ our Lord. Thanks be to God. Today is the second Sunday of Advent, and we will light the candle of peace. Last Sunday we lit the first candle in our Advent wreath and celebrated the patriarchs and the prophets. And the lighting of the first candle reminded us of the message of hope. We light it again as we remember our Savior, born a king in the lineage of King David. Jesus was born in Bethlehem, and we believe that we will come again into his presence as God is to fulfill all promises made to us, that the Messiah would rule over the world wisely and bless all the nations. Today we light the second candle of Advent, the candle of peace. We remember the prophets who spoke of the coming of Christ and how the Savior would be born. The prophet Isaiah was to call this Messiah the Prince of Peace. He told us how he would rule the world. When Jesus came, he taught people the importance of being peacemakers. He said that those who make peace shall be called children of God. When Christ comes to us, he brings us peace and he will bring us everlasting peace when he comes again. We light the candle of peace to remind us that Jesus is the Prince of Peace, and through him, peace is found. Peace is like a light shining in a dark place. As we look at this candle, we celebrate the peace we find in Jesus. Let us pray, Lord Jesus, light of the world. The prophets said that you would bring peace and save your people from trouble. Give peace to our hearts at this Christmas time, we ask that we wait patiently for you to come together, that you would remain present with us. Help us this day and every day to worship you, to hear your word, and to do your will by sharing your peace with each other. We ask this in the name of the one who was to be born in Bethlehem. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. I will go to the altar of God. To God who gives joy to my soul. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. My dear brothers and sisters, let us confess our sins to God and prepare ourselves that we may worthily participate in this holy sacrifice. And now, let us turn unto the altar of God and make an examination of conscience.
having confessed our sins unto God and asking for his forgiveness, I will recite the Confidior. I confess to Almighty God, one in the Holy Trinity, who knows the innermost secrets of my heart, that I have sinned in thought, word, and deed, by my fault, by my fault, by my own great fault. In your presence, O God, I earnestly repent of all my sins, and I am truly sorry that I have offended you. Most loving Father, have mercy on me and forgive my sins. I resolve to amend my life to improve and sanctify it, that I may become worthy to serve you faithfully all the days of my life. I ask the Blessed Mother Mary, all the saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy upon us, forgive our sins, and bring us unto life everlasting. Amen. May the Almighty and merciful Lord grant us pardon, absolution, and remission of our sins. Amen. May our Lord Jesus Christ absolve you, and with his authority vested in me by him, I absolve you of your sins. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. O God, you will again renew us. And your people will rejoice in you. Show us, O Lord, your mercy. And grant us your salvation. Lord, hear our prayer. And let our cry come to you. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Take our sins away from us, Lord, so that we might enter the Holy of Holies with purified hearts through Christ our Lord. A man named John was sent by God. He came for testimony, to testify to the light, so that all might believe through him. He was not the light, but came to testify to the light. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Lord God of Israel, you sent your prophets to prepare the way for our salvation. Prepare our hearts that we may joyfully hail the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, and always live according to his teachings. We ask this through the same Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. On this, the second Sunday of Advent, we take the first reading from the book of Isaiah the prophet. Comfort, give comfort to my people, says your God. Speak tenderly in Jerusalem and proclaim to her that her service is at an end. Her guilt is expiated. Indeed, she has received from the hand of the Lord double for all her sins. A voice cries out, In the desert, prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the wasteland a highway for our God. Every valley shall be filled in. Every mountain and hill shall be made low. The rugged land shall be made a plain. The rough country, a broad valley. Then the glory of the Lord shall be revealed. And all the people shall see it together, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. Go up on a high mountain, Zion, herald of glad tidings, cry out at the top of your voice. Jerusalem, herald of good news, fear not to cry out and say to the cities of Judah, here is your God. Here comes with power the Lord God, who rules by his strong arm. 
Here is his reward with him, his recompense before him. Like a shepherd who feeds his flock, in his arms he gathers the lambs, carrying them in his bosom and leading the ewes with care. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The gradual for today. Our God comes and will not be silent. Devouring, fire proceeds, storming fiercely round about. Near indeed is salvation for the loyal. Prosperity will fill our land. The second reading for today is taken from the second letter of Peter the Apostle. Do not ignore this one fact, beloved, that with the Lord one day is like a thousand years, and a thousand years like one day. The Lord does not delay his promise, as some regard delay, but he is patient with you, not wishing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. But the day of the Lord will come like a thief, and then the heavens will pass away with a mighty roar, and the elements will be dissolved by fire, and the earth and everything done on it will be found out. Since everything is to be dissolved in this way, what sort of persons ought you to be, conducting yourselves in holiness and compassion? waiting for and hastening the coming of the day of the Lord, because of which the heavens will be dissolved in flames and the elements melted by fire. But according to his promise, we await new heavens and a new earth in which righteousness dwells. Therefore, beloved, since you await these things, be eager to be found without spot or blemish before him at peace. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia. See upon the mountains their advances, the bearer of good news, announcing peace. Alleluia, alleluia. Almighty and eternal God, who cleansed the lips of the prophet Isaiah with a burning coal. Cleanse my heart and my lips through your gracious mercy, that I may worthily proclaim your holy gospel. Through Christ our Lord, amen. May the Lord be in my heart and on my lips, that I may worthily proclaim his holy gospel. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Mark. Glory be to you, O Lord. The beginning of the Gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. As it is written in Isaiah the prophet, Behold, I am sending my messenger ahead of you. He will prepare your way. A voice of one crying out in the desert, Prepare the way of the Lord make straight his paths. John the Baptist appeared in the desert proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. People of the whole Judean countryside and all the descendants and inhabitants of Jerusalem were going out to him and were being baptized by him in the river Jordan as they acknowledged their sins. John was clothed in camel's hair, with a leather belt around his waist. He fed on locusts and wild honey, and this is what he proclaimed. One mightier than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop and loosen the thongs of his sandals. I have baptized you with water. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to you, Lord Jesus Christ.
May the name of Jesus Christ be praised by all of us, now and forevermore. Amen. The voice of one crying in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord. From the Old Testament book of Isaiah. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. To you, my dear brothers and sisters in Christ, Last Sunday, we lit the first candle on our Advent wreath. This candle represented and represents hope, defined as a desire of expectation. I spoke last week about how there was a deep longing and an expectation for a deliverer as promised by God and who would be sent by God to redeem his chosen. This deliverer, this redeemer became a savior whose coming into the world was spoken by the prophets, such as Isaiah, Micah, Daniel, Malachi. Today, the second candle on our Advent wreath is lit. It represents peace. We read in the Old Testament of the struggle of the children of Israel from their enslavement in Egypt to their deliverance by God through Moses, from their wandering in the wilderness for 40 years to finding a land of milk and honey, and also to the destruction of the, the Holy Temple in Jerusalem in 587 B.C. This struggle would continue in the New Testament where Rome would enslave God's chosen. Again, there was such a strong desire of hope that God would hear the cries and would fulfill his promises. We are also told that this deliverer would not only fulfill hope, but also bring peace. So after about 4,000 years of hoping, God heard the cries and he answered the prayers. Out of the wilderness, there came a man named John who came with a message. It was a message of hope. Just as a shofar or a ram's horn is sounded to announce the Jewish high celebrations. The voice of John the Baptist announced the coming of this deliverer. It is interesting that even today the shofar is sounded on the two most holiest days in Judaism, Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur, times that are set aside for fasting, for prayer and repentance. John's call was like the sounding of the shofar, for John called also for fasting, prayer, and repentance. We hear the words from the prophet Isaiah, a voice of one crying out in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make straight his paths. Every valley shall be filled, and every mountain and hill shall be made low. The winding road shall be made straight, and the rough way smooth, and all flesh shall see the salvation of God. A voice of one crying in the wilderness. You know, my dear brothers and sisters, we are living at a, a time in our world, in our nation, and among our communities that this voice needs to be heard and this message taken to heart. There are some who see what is taking place in our world and who believe that we are beginning to live and experience the end times. The stress and the strain of a worldwide pandemic, the coronavirus, which has claimed in our nation alone 
over 14 million cases and the death of over 275,000 individuals so far. The racial and the social injustice. Our economy in shambles. Millions who are unemployed and homeless. And then there is the politics. So much divisiveness. So much anger. So much chaos. And it's said, to, and it is well to say that things haven't gotten much better, but just the opposite. Things are getting worse. There have been times when I think twice about turning on the TV to look at the news or even read a newspaper. The Polish have a word that describes this condition. It is called głupstwo, or craziness. If there was ever a time where mankind needs to stop and listen to that one voice crying out in the wilderness, it is now. John led a very simple life and had a very simple message. Repent and prepare the way of the Lord. Saint Bernard wrote that there are actually three comings of the Lord. The first was at Christmas when Jesus came as a Prince of Peace to redeem and offer salvation. The third time will be at the end times, when the Lord will come to judge the living and the dead. The second time, my brothers and sisters, is when he is born within us and gives purpose and meaning to our lives. Prepare the way of the Lord is a timeless message to all who would seek and call upon God to be in their lives. But with this, we must individually be on guard and not allow ourselves to be distracted by the influence, the sad influence, or the chaos in our world. It is a message that St. Paul spoke about in his letter to the Christian church at Philippi. He writes, I am confident of this, that the one who began a good work in you will continue to complete it until the day of Christ Jesus. God is my witness, how I long for all of you with the affection of Christ Jesus. And this is my prayer, that your love may increase ever more and more in the knowledge and every kind of perception to discern what is of value so that you may be pure and blameless on that day of Christ filled with the fruit of righteousness that comes through Jesus Christ for the glory and the praise of God. My dear brothers and sisters, prepare the way of the Lord is today's message. It is a message also of peace. It is a message that calls us to hearken to that inner voice that speaks to us in the depth of our own being. But how do we prepare the way of the Lord? In St. Paul's letter to the Romans, Paul sets forth a formula for a successful preparation. When he writes, do not be conformed yourselves to this age, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and pleasing and perfect. We prepare the day in the way of the Lord, my brothers and sisters, when we love more and hate less, when we learn not to judge others more harshly than we judge ourselves, when we learn to be more forgiving as Christ was and is. John ushers in the one who brings peace 
tranquility, and stability. Did not our blessed Lord say, Peace I give unto you. My peace I share with you. Not as the world gives, but as I give to you. And so may we, on this second Sunday in Advent, seek to prepare ourselves spiritually and find that peace and tranquility within us as we prepare for the way of our Lord. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May the name of Jesus Christ be praised by all of us, now and forevermore. Amen. I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he was born of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in fulfillment of the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Shout for joy, O daughter Zion. Sing joyfully, O Israel. Be glad and exult with all your heart, O daughter Jerusalem. The King of Israel, the Lord, is in your midst. We need have no further misfortune to fear.
Pray, my brothers and sisters, that our gifts of love and sacrifice may truly be accepted this day by God, our Heavenly Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice from your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good, and for the benefit of his holy church. Amen. Let us pray. O Heavenly Father, receive our prayers as we prepare the sacrifice before you. Fill our hearts with your love and peace, so that we may know the presence of your Son among us. We ask this through the same Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God. Forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your whore hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks unto the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. Father, all powerful and ever living God, we do well always and everywhere to give you thanks through Jesus Christ our Lord and Savior. For or through the promise, sending on Jesus Christ to earth for us, you revealed your goodness and unending love. Sharing in the hope of the patriarchs and prophets, may we worthily prepare a dwelling place for the coming Messiah in our hearts. Therefore, we he join with the voices of angels and archangels, with all the saints and the entire church. And we lift our hymn of praise to your glory, repeating very humbly. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heavens and earth are full of the majesty of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Most merciful Father, we most humbly pray and ask you through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, to accept and to bless these gifts, these presents, these holy and spotless sacrifices which we offer to you in the first place for your holy Catholic Church that you would guide it in peace, defense, and unity throughout the whole world with its bishops and priests especially Anthony, our prime bishop, and Paul, our bishop, and all who profess the true orthodox in Catholic faith, which comes to us from the apostles. Remember your servants, O Lord. Let us remember in our prayers this day the sick, the suffering, and the dying, the hungry and the homeless, the unemployed, all those who suffer from the COVID-19 pandemic. Let us remember in our prayers all abused and neglected children in our world, as well as all those victims of violence, both here and abroad. Let us remember all those who serve in our armed forces, both here and abroad. and all here present, whose faith and devotion are known to you for whom we offer, or who offer up to you the sacrifice of praise for themselves and all their own, for the hope of salvation and deliverance, and who freely choose to serve you, the living, eternal, and true God. We join in communion with an honor above all others, the memory of Mary, the glorious Virgin Mother of our Lord and God, Jesus Christ, also your blessed apostles, martyrs, and confessors, together with all the countless number of saintly men and women of all nations, but especially of our nation, who lived, suffered, and died for the glory of your name and the coming of your kingdom. May the remembrance of these praiseworthy people encourage us to follow their heroic example, making us worthy of your grace and love. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We ask you, Lord, to graciously accept our offering of that of your whole family. So, order our days in your peace that we may be saved from spiritual damnation and counted among the flock of your chosen people. Through Christ our Lord, amen. O God, we ask you to bless, to accept, and to confirm this offering and to make it pleasing unto yourself 
so that it may be filled with the power of the Holy Spirit and become for us the body and the blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, the day before his suffering and death, in order to manifest his infinite love to his disciples and through them to all who would believe in him, to fill the hearts of his followers with the fire of this love, draw them to himself, make them joyful and save them. He instituted these holy mysteries in which spiritually and bodily in his entire being he again lives among his people. At that solemn moment, so sacred for the whole human family, our Savior took bread into his holy and venerable hands, and having lifted his eyes to heaven, to you, his Almighty Father, giving thanks to you, he blessed it, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat it, for this is my body, which is given for you. In like manner after supper, taking this excellent chalice into his holy and venerable hands, again giving thanks to you. He blessed it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant, which shall be shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. As often as you do this, do it in remembrance of me. Therefore, in remembrance of this Christ, your Son, our Lord, and his blessed passion, resurrection, and his glorious ascension, we, your servants and faithful people, offer to your divine majesty from your own gifts and presence a pure offering, a holy offering, an immaculate offering, the holy bread of eternal life, and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to regard these offerings with favor and joy and accept them as you receive the gifts of your just servant Abel, the sacrifice of our patriarch Abraham, and that which our high priest Melchizedek offered you a holy sacrifice and immaculate host. We humbly ask you, Almighty God, command that this offering be brought by the hands of your holy angel to your high altar into the presence of your divine majesty, that we, who receive the most sacred body and blood of your Son from this altar, may be filled with every blessing and grace through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, remember your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and who now sleep in peace. To these souls, Lord, and all who rest in Christ, grant we pray a place of refreshment, light, and peace through the same Christ, our Lord. Amen. And grant us your sinful servants who hope in the greatness of your mercy, some part in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs and with all your saints who shed their blood for your name. Their hearts were always open to justice and mercy and with lives patterned after their divine master merited eternal joy. Number us in their company, Lord, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offenses. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. By whom you always create, sanctify, revive, bless, and freely give us all these good things. Through him, with him, in him. All honor and glory are yours, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. Forever and ever, Amen. let us pray. 
Instructed by our Savior, teaching and following divine example, we say with confidence, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Deliver us, Lord, from all evils, past, present, and future, and by the intercession of the blessed and glorious Mother of God, Mary. Together with your blessed apostles, Peter and Paul, also Andrew and all the saints, grant us peace in our day. Supported by the help of your mercy, may we always be free from sin and secure from all disturbance. Through the same Jesus Christ, your Son and our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit. Forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. May this commingling and consecration of the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ help us to receive it to everlasting life. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace. My peace I give you. Do not look at our sins, but on the faith of your church, and grant us the peace and unity of your kingdom, for you live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, by the will of the Father and the work of the Holy Spirit, your death brought life to the world. By your holy body and blood, free me from all my sins and from every evil. Keep me faithful to your teaching and never let me be parted from you who lives and reigns God forever and ever. Amen. May the partaking of your body and blood, Lord Jesus, not be cause for my judgment or condemnation, though I am unworthy to receive your great sacrament. Through your loving kindness may become my safeguard and healing remedy. Our master, saving master, awaken in all of us a living faith, fervent love, worship, adoration, and a holy longing through this communion. Make us your willing servants, zealous to fulfill your holy will. May it at last unite us entirely with you, our Lord and our God. Grant us who lives and reigns with God the Father in unity with the Holy Spirit forever and ever. Amen. I will take the bread of heaven, and I will call upon the name of the Lord. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word and I shall be healed. May the body of Christ bring me to everlasting life. Amen. What shall the return unto the Lord for all the graces he has rendered unto me? I will take the chalice of salvation and call upon the name of the Lord with high praise while I call upon him, and I shall be saved from all my enemies. May the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ preserve my soul unto life everlasting. Amen. My dear brothers and sisters, since there are many who cannot receive the Blessed Sacrament due to the COVID-19 pandemic. Let us offer a prayer and act of spiritual communion. Let us all pray. Most loving Jesus, I adore you in the most blessed sacrament in which you are truly present. I love you above all things, and I long for you in my soul. Since I cannot receive you sacramentally, 
I ask you to come spiritually into my heart and heal my soul. I embrace you and unite myself with you. May I never be separated from you. Inflame my heart with the fire of your love, my Lord and Savior. Amen. The one who gives his testimony says, Yes, I am coming soon. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Eternal Father, may we who have been fed at the table of the Lord now fervently carry on your work of love and service in this world. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, and art one God forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Go, the sacrifice is offered. Thanks be to God. May the tribute of our worship be pleasing to you, most holy Trinity. Grant that the sacrifice which we, though unworthy, have offered up into the sight of your majesty be acceptable to you through your mercy may be effective for ourselves and all those for whom we have offered it through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the Almighty and merciful God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory be to you, Lord. In the beginning was the Word. The Word was in God's presence, and the Word was God. He was present to God in the beginning. Through him all things came into being, and apart from him nothing came to be. Whatever came to be in him found life. Life were the light of men. The light shines on in the darkness of darkness that did not overcome it. There was a man named John sent by God, who came as a witness to testify to the light, so that through him all might believe, but only to testify to the light, for he himself was not the light. The real light which gives light to every man was coming into the world. He was in the world, and through him the world was made, yet the world did not know who he was. To his own he came, yet his own did not accept him. Any who did accept him, he empowered to become children of God. These are they who believe in his name, who were begotten not by blood, nor by cardinal desire, nor by man's willing it, but by God. The Word became flesh and made his dwelling among us and we have seen his glory the glory of an only son coming from the father filled with enduring love 
Thanks be to God. My dear brothers and sisters, I thank you for sharing with us today's Holy Mass. It is our prayer that God would bless all of you and your loved ones. And let us conclude this morning service with the offering up of a final prayer for each other, for our loved ones, and again for all those who are sick, suffering, and dying, as well as for our own intentions and also in the end for the repose of the souls of our departed loved ones. May God be with all of you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. And for the repose of the souls of all our faithful departed, eternal rest grant unto their souls, O Lord. May perpetual light shine upon them. May they all rest in peace. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.